Hello there, everybody. This is Silent Mist, and welcome to Minecraft Life, a vanilla Minecraft playthrough. It's been a long time since I've played vanilla Minecraft. I think the last time was back when uh, the Red Cube server was up and about, the private server, that is. And ever since then, I've only been playing either modded vanilla, such as uh, hosting a bucket server, or Feed the Beast or Technic. And, well, I think I want to take a little step back and enjoy some vanilla Minecraft, because I don't want to say that I'm overwhelmed with all these mods, but sometimes it's really nice to, instead of going out and learning new things, to just applying old knowledge that you have cultivated throughout the ages. So, yes, welcome to Minecraft Life. I can say that I just spent about the last 20 minutes attempting to record that intro because I could not think of a good way to start things off and I just kept messing things up, but I think I finally got it. <laughs> but yes, welcome, welcome to Vanilla Minecraft. So I have a lot of plans that I want to do here in Vanilla, I'm saying Vanilla way too much, here in the great old world of untouched, unmodded Minecraft. And to be honest, all these things could be done with mods, but uh, man, I have been playing too much, just feed the beast and all of that. So much to the point of where I just want to build things and not worry about crazy machines that I need to make for the next episode. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, of course, this is just going to be an introductory episode, so there isn't going to be too much crazy stuff that we're gonna do, but uh, I do plan on not exactly going about things in the simplest of ways, um, mainly because I'm gonna be learning a lot of really cool hardware-based stuff this year in college, or rather this semester in college. I'm gonna be learning how to do some basic gate lot, not even basic gate logic, but uh, pretty much how to construct a CPU from nothing but gates. So it was with that idea as a foundation and the fact that I really wanted to just have a nice world where I could relax and build things at my own leisure that I decided that I wanted to play vanilla Minecraft be able to build things within that world, and on top of that, be able to build crazy redstone contraptions within that world. So, yes, that is what I would like to do here in the wonderful world of Minecraft life. So, the name, I don't know why I thought of this. Uh, but to be honest, I was thinking of using the old getting technical with Minecraft name that I had from way back when, but when all was done, I was just like, eh, that I should really save that for if I ever go back to the Technic pack or something, and... Yeah, I mean, sometime, sooner or later, if there's a really cool Technic pack that's released, I might do Getting Technical with Minecraft Season 2. But, alas, that'll be something that's, that'll be for the future. But, yes, it has been such a long time, and I really am looking forward to just playing around in vanilla, because one of the other reasons why it's not so much that I'm tired of Minecraft, but that always sits in the back of my mind is what happens when something new comes out and specifically what happens when something new comes out in the world of Technic, Techit, Feed the Beast, mod packs. Well, you get the new pack and you have fun with it. Now, there's just one small problem with thinking that way, and it's that every time something new comes out, you have to start from scratch. And that's actually been one of the biggest fears of the, uh, the Feed the Beast Resurrection server. It was that something really cool is going to come out, and then we're going to have to start anew. And it's actually because of that that I've been considering switching the mod pack from Feed the Beast Resurrection to Direwolf's pack, because Direwolf actually seems to be updating his pack quite frequently, and on top of that, usually things don't break. So, it was with that mindset that I figured, well, why not begin some vanilla Minecraft? Because, quite honestly, <laughs> The get you can play, you can create a world in the first revisions of Alpha, and then just transport it all the way up through the ages, going through every update until you reach the current. Heck, you could do it w with the snapshots that are currently available. So, I thought this would be a nice, just safe way to have a potential series that could last for a long time, and that's something that I really haven't done with Minecraft in a really long time and something that I would really like to do. And actually, that's one of the things that I miss most about the Red Cube server, is the fact that I really haven't had any 200 plus episode series. Did I even have 200 episodes on the Red Cube server? I don't know. But uh, yes, so now that we've gotten the introduction out of the way, I 
I don't know. There's going to be a lot of cuts that are probably going to be happening in this series because there's going to be a lot of work that I'm going to need to do off screen. But we're at the beginning of our series, so we might as well keep going for a little while. So uh, on top of just being able to generally record and whatnot, or not generally record, uh, build what I want to do, be who I want to be, B-A-R-B-I-E, Barbie girl. <laughs> no, that is not what I want to do. But uh, aside from that, um, one thing that I, I really want to have a series like this where I can just kick back and relax. Uh, if I ever want to just have an episode of talking to you, the audience, I can do that while just messing around here and there. So, yeah, this this is going to be a lot of things that I will really come to enjoy, hopefully. And on top of that, I'll be able to have fun and build stuff, build crazy stuff here and there. Um, other than that, what else? What else? I, I have a lot of plans that I want to do. On top of that, uh, I would like to make it so every once in a while, I might open up this world, be that on a stream or just with some of my friends, so we can all get stuff done together. So this is going to be, for the most part, single player, I should say. Uh, and possibly in the future just opened up temporarily to have other people come and join me. So I figure that'll be a lot of fun and actually something a bit unique where you just switch between single player and multiplayer in a single player environment as opposed to recording by yourself on a server. So yes, I'm just going around chopping down trees because we need a nice backbone of resources before we head out for the night. And to be honest, so I've regenerated this world over and over and over because every time I failed the recording, failed the intro, I decided, okay, I really like this world that was generated. Let's try it again. And actually, this world is really cool. Um, I was flying around in single player creative on a creative version of this world, and there's a swamp over that way. There's pretty much every type of forest within... A few hundred blocks and there's a village right here by spawn which I thought hey that's actually a really nice thing to have so I would like these villager guys to go hide away in the night because I want to seclude or trap them in their own houses so they don't accidentally get murdered I mean no one wants to get murdered who wants to die but <laughs> yeah th that that would be a thing so when it gets dark out I'm probably going to try and trap these guys in their houses because I don't want them to be killed by zombies but on top of that, it also gives us some nice resources here at the beginning of the game. And, yep, let's see. Oh, wow, we already got gold and iron, guys. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, this this seed that I generated with this world actually uh, was... Oh, where did your door go? It's not here. The seed that I generated was completely randomly generated, and I thought, wow, this is actually really cool. Let's try to keep this. And where is this villager? Is he dead? I don't know. <laughs> but to get started with all of the just general talking, I have a story that I want to tell you all. So, yesterday, my college has a bit of a Reddit, quite a popular Reddit actually for college Reddit. But um, we have a Reddit thingamahoozit, and the other day, someone posted, So my room exploded. And I'm just thinking, well, that's an interesting title. And as it turns out... He actually wasn't just that that wasn't some sort of flashy title to get you to click on the link. His room exploded. Um, and by that I mean not like kabloom, everyone's dead, but rather there are heaters in all of our rooms and he, well, not all of them. Mine currently doesn't have a heater. It well, has central heat as opposed to uh, as opposed to a heating unit, but a pipe ruptured and it exploded and it actually he had to evacuate the room. The building had a fire alarm because of it and he might be pressing charges because we're a tech school. Everyone has computers, and actually this was in the computer science dorm. So not only do they have computers, but there are a lot of them. And after that, apparently uh, one or two more ended up rupturing, and on top of that, it started leaking down through the floors. And I think he was on the third or fourth floor of his house. And yeah, so damages. And I didn't know who this was, but it turns out he was in my Japanese class. And, oh, Jesus, these guys are not in a cool place. Can can you go? Can you go in there? I, I would like you to... Nope, come on. Come now. Oh, come on. Just go go into... Okay, fine. Don't. If you're not going to do that, I'm not going to force you. But, yeah, th that's kind of frightening. And on top of that, uh, RIT, my school, is attempting... Well, they, they, I don't want to say they tried to blame him, but they're trying to offload the blame off of themselves as much as possible. And by that, I mean, uh, after, after all the stuff had happened, someone was sent down to inspect it, and, uh, the reason they gave for the pipe rupturing was the windows were open, and so, 
I guess I should give you guys a bit of a background to what it's like here at RIT, um, or rather, Rochester in general. Rochester is one of the top ten snowiest cities in America. And by that, I mean we get a lot of snow because of living right near a lake. And we get really cold temperatures. To give you just a rough idea, I, I'm sorry for the people that don't use the imperial system that us Americans use. Or is it the empirical? One of those. Imperial, empirical systems, whatever we use. Um, but today, we have a high of zero degrees and a low of negative seven. On top of that, we have a wind chill of negative 30. Uh, <laughs> I've been consistently getting winter storm warnings, not because it's... Not because of the whopping two inches of snow that we're supposed to be getting over the next couple of days, but rather because of the negative 30 degree wind chill. It's kind of scary getting emails saying, hey, you shouldn't go outside because it's deadly outside. <laughs> so, yeah, that that is a thing. Are, are these guys going into their houses? Yes, they are. So I, like I said, I was going to just block these guys off. Can you go into a house, please? I think he's a little confused. Man, I, I am, it is nighttime outside right now, and I have a feeling it's going to get kind of dangerous here. Do I have things on hard mode? I Nope, I am supposed to be on hard mode. I could lock things in on hard mode, but there might be an opportunity here or there where I figure it would probably be a good idea to switch into peaceful mode for whatever reason. And, oh, yep, it's, it's slowly getting dangerous out here. I think I'm actually going to cut, oh, jeez, okay, go inside. I'm going to cut until it is daytime because there really isn't too much for me to do here right now and I would rather not die like I said so I will be right back well I watched a guy get killed last night it was a very sad moment as I realized I messed up by going into another house um, I was just exploring seeing if maybe any of these houses had a bed in it and when I went into one house there was a villager and that villager met an untimely end when a zombie decided to come enter that house oh my Jeebus where did these guys come from don't you dare note. I hope these guys don't notice that one guy right there. Mr. Doctor. Doctor, no! No! You can live. I believe in you. Don't die. No, no. Come on, guy. Yeah. Surviving like a champ. But, uh, yeah, I accidentally killed a villager last night by moving around. Ah! Screw you, spider. <laughs> You're the first one to actually deal damage to me. Hi there, Enderman. Um, I'm going to probably regret this choice immensely, but... Oh, oh, you're right. I, I'm very right. I messed up. I messed up. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Ah! Don't murder my face off. There's so many enemies out here tonight. Okay. Okay. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. I hope he doesn't murder my face. He's going to murder my face off. I already know that. But uh, until he does, I'm just going to plant me some potatoes and figure out... Oh, there he- Oh, Jesus. He's still teleporting around like a confused little Enderman. Okay, there he is. Let's go murder him. Oh, he keeps running away. That butt face. If I look at him, I don't want to look at him. That's a bad idea. I'm not going to look at him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that guy is a world-class butt face, and I will have nothing to do with him. Uh, for this remainder of this first episode, since I really didn't plan on getting too much done, I want to go find a sheep so I can make a bed. Oh, would you look at the speak of the devil? Is that a sheep right there? No, those are just chicken. I really want to make a bed so I don't have to wait through the night before uh, I can continue to do stuff because it is far too dangerous to do stuff at night when it is hard mode outside. That stupid Enderman is just that cheeky little piece of crap. I just want to murder his face, but he keeps teleporting around. But uh, I guess I can give you guys a little bit of a world tour. Here's one of the many forests that I was talking about. No, oh, look, sheep. Do I have two iron? Yes, I do. I will use that two iron to make me some shears. Since I already have a sword, that was pretty much the first thing that I wanted. And I didn't have enough to make a uh, pickaxe, so shears seem to be the next best idea. We can go clip these guys and make ourselves... Uh, excuse me, a burp. Oh, wait, you you left or right-click them, not left-click them. It's It's been a while, guys. It's been a long while. Let's grab these guys, and then we can go shear those guys over there. And after we do that, we will be... Is that a horse? Did I see a horse back there? No, that's just a tree. I don't know why I thought it was a horse. Or maybe it was this guy right here. You little sly guy, you. It's a sly guy. He's just like a shy guy, but he's rather sly. Uh, but yes, this in this series, I am going to most likely going to... I am going to most likely... Jeez, I cannot speak. Um, be asking you guys for a lot of feedback on ideas and what I should do. 
And, uh, well, since I'll probably be recording these episodes in one or two episode chunks, uh, and then it usually takes a day or two for everything to go up, depending on how things are structured, probably an episode or two after I make all the announcements or ask you guys for opinions, I'll get to applying them, and yeah, a lot, a lot of cool things. I'll hopefully be born from that. And the first question I have to ask you guys is, would you like me to build above ground or underground? Should I have a large house or should I go for like a really large, crazy underground? I don't even know. Fortress, not even a fortress, but maze thing. Who knows? <laughs> you guys are going to have to tell me that because I don't know exactly what I want to build yet in terms of homes. And I'm going to need some nice centralized base. Honestly, Underground is what I'm currently preferring because that just leaves for lots of easy room for expansion and then yeah you can build tons of gigantic things here and there. So yep that is a thing that I'm going to be doing. Well of course I'm going to be building a house but until I build a house I really need to get into doing some resource collection. So that's going to be happening soon. Hey guy you you want to so desperately go outside but you're trapped right now. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think it's time to go look for a cave. Although I really should probably cook some food first, because we do have these 23 potatoes, and God knows, or rather, every one of you guys knows that I have this uncanny obsession with potatoes, and I don't, I don't intend on letting that die in any way. So, potatoes all the way, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, so first question, of course, was where should I build my house? Should it be above or underground? And second question is... Ah, no, I don't have a second question. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, well, I guess a sort of pseudo second question would be, should I start playing in the snapshots? Right now, I think the most recent snapshot isn't anything super exciting, so I'm probably not going to do anything with that. But in the future, when snapshots get a bit cooler, should I uh, start messing around with snapshots? I think I'm going to because... Uh, the. <laughs> to be honest, some of the snapshots usually have a lot of really cool stuff to offer, albeit while being slightly buggy. But, for instance, the 1.8 snapshot, I if I were recording vanilla Minecraft at the later parts of the snapshot, I definitely would have upgraded to the snapshot because it got stabler and stabler, and then there were just so many new features that were added that it would be silly not to be using the snapshot. So, yeah. Should I be using snapshots right now? I don't know what the current 1.8 snapshots that are better than or that are newer than 1.8.1, which is the most recent release in Minecraft. I don't know if they offer anything super special just yet. They might be a, there might be a couple of concepts at the risk of some pretty big bugs, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll also figure that out. Um, other than that, I guess I could I tell you another story. I don't think I have too many more stories to tell you. I think out of everything left. Uh, well, I finished recording Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door last Friday. So I have been trying to figure out what I'm going to record after that. My first idea was to start recording uh, Pikmin again. Unfortunately, something is really wrong with my Pikmin dump. And uh, for all you guys who don't know how I have my GameCube recording set up, essentially... I, since I am living here at college and uh, I am quite a ways away from my house, uh, I don't bring all my games with me. There are just too many games for me to bring and I would not be able to carry my massive game collection with me. And there are a lot of games that I would like to play that I have back at home, but I just can't. So I have backups of almost all of my games on a hard drive hooked up to my Wii U and through some magic, <laughs> some black magic. I have uh, the ability to play GameCube games on my Wii U. And uh, most recently, I was playing Pikmin, and I actually recorded a couple of episodes of Pikmin. However, when one of the cutscene loads, the entire game just dies, and I haven't figured out why exactly it just flat out murders itself in the pants, but it does indeed murder itself straight out of its own pants, and it's not a happy panda. So I need to find a different dump of the game because the current one is very much flawed. Ah, so that is on my current to-do list. Outside of that, I need to figure out what game I'm going to be beginning to not really replace Paper Mario because technically Paper Mario is done and over with, but rather to uh, succeed Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door. Although, to be, <laughs> to be all, quite honest, I could put that off for quite some time before it becomes a problem because I'm currently uploading Paper Mario every other day. 
and I do believe that I have videos, ske videos scheduled through April before I am out of Paper Mario content. I think uh, I finished recording right as episode 4-6 was published. So, yeah, there was... I, I went pretty crazy over the last couple of weeks just recording that daily. And actually, that's probably the reason as to why Technica, or not Technica, Feed the Beast Resurrection hasn't been getting as much time because that time that I had been using to record that, I'd been recording Paper Mario. And there are only so many hours in the day, and I was just having so much fun that I couldn't not. So, there's that. Uh, also, <laughs> the aforementioned reasons where right now in Feed the Beast, I'm at a point in which... I, as soon as I become self-sufficient on energy, I hit a bit of a ditch in terms of creativity, ideas, and drive. Like, getting a self-sustaining source of energy is my top priority, and as soon as I get it, I'm just like, well, my life's goal is done. What else is there to do? And obviously, Resurrection is a massive mod pack, so there's a ton to do, but so much of it is stuff that I don't currently know, so I need to get, I need to learn it, and... Between my extraordinarily long school days and the exorbitant amount of homework that I have that requires me to learn and apply a lot of new things, I'm just burnt out by the end of the day, and I don't particularly want to record some, or I don't want to have to learn something else just to record it and to apply it. So, that has been kind of like the problem with the last couple of weeks of very sparse Feed the Beast content. Obviously, there was that one four episode spike where I recorded uh, like four episodes in a row and then uh, didn't publish any of them until they were all edited and that that I want every once in a while I want to do that because it, it's just nice to uh, it, it's not like I don't want to learn anything new it's just I want to take a break every now and then and just do what I already know and that's why that's the main reason why this series is here and I also just want to have a series that I can have survived for a long time, and on top of that, talk to you guys and interact with the audience a lot more. Because, to be quite honest, I've done a pretty terrible job of audience interaction as of late, and I would like to correct that at least a lot of it. Uh, but I'm sure you guys are going to have... I, well, I hope you guys are going to have some feedback on this new idea of this series. Tell me what you think. Is... Oh, ow. <laughs> is having yet another vanilla series, and by yet another I mean in the world of Minecraft Let's Plays, yet another vanilla series not something you guys want to see? Is it something that you would like for me to continue? What do you guys think? Should I... Should I continue this? Are yeah, you thinking, eh, Silent Mist, this is silly. You're silly. You shouldn't do this. Go do something else, you silly goose. In which case, I'd say, well, well, maybe. Probably not, because I, I will enjoy this regardless. Let me sleep. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, uh, we've gone for about two days now. I'm going to slowly start ending things off. Let's go check on the stuff that's currently smelting. This is another reason why I really like spawning next to a village. And, honestly, I didn't think about this until after I spawned here. But there, it's a nice place to start off, because there will be some tools... Uh, there'll be a couple of furnaces lying around and then a couple of farms, so you don't need to worry about, oh god, where am I going to get food? Instead, it's already there for you. And let's see, we got a bunch of charcoal and we got some potatoes. It's perfect. Uh, I'm going to make some torches because this area right now is a little bit dangerous due to the lack of torches for the villagers. And since this is really close to spawn, sooner or later, I'm going to need to take these guys with me just so I can... Uh, oh, hi there, villagers. Just so I can have... All the, well, I want villagers for a bunch of projects. I want There are a lot of projects that I have planned for this and a lot of things that I want to do. Uh, oh, hi there. You're going to die right now. <laughs> oh, yep, you're dead. Uh, you're going to die right there right now. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things that I would like to do. And one of them is just have a metric butt ton of different farms. And by that I mean... Like, have a farm for harvesting some of everything. And that that is just something that I, I want to see in a world, the world that I make. There's lots of stuff everywhere. So, yeah, that is that is one of the things that you're... If I do continue with the series, which I am most likely going to do so, unless you guys really just don't want to see vanilla Minecraft, which in that case, okay, I guess I won't. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope that's not the case. Um... Yeah, well, there are going to just be a lot of cool things that I want to build. Hopefully, I can pioneer a couple of new things, uh, because, I, I, like I said, I'm going to be learning quite a lot of really cool stuff this year, and a lot of that I can apply within the game. I mean, there's the entirety of the redstone logic that is pretty much one-to-one -one with gate logic, and, yeah, it pretty much is the exact same thing. I mean, right now, actually, I've experimented in a single-player world, 
um, with making a processor, and I mean, that's done, been done a ton of times, but I made an adder, an 8-bit adder, without looking at anything online, without any references, I just did it using my own I, my own like idea, I get my own ideas to see if I could. And this villager, you're in the way. Seriously, guy, I am trying my hardest to light this house up for you so you don't die a terrible death. And you're not even letting me do that. But uh, yeah, so there is going to be. Uh, I want to build a lot of cool stuff. Um, obviously, I'm going to need to keep things somewhat realistic. I, I'm not going to be going out and building like an Intel i7 processor. A, because you really can't do that in Minecraft, and B, because you need a stupid amount of resources in order to do something of that caliber. So, yeah, um, it, it's going, I, there are a couple of over-the-top projects that I would like to do, obviously, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see exactly what's going to be feasible and what isn't going to be feasible. Oh, look, Surface Iron, that is, like, the best. And, uh, oh, yeah, on top of that, I really haven't played vanilla Minecraft, or, yeah, I, I haven't played Minecraft in term survival Minecraft, that much since uh, 1.7, and even so, the earlier revisions of 1.7, I think 1.7.2 was the last one that I played, and I think we're at like 1.7.10 with the most up-to-date versions of that, but um, because of that, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't yet been able to play with, including, well, I just saw this and this reminded me, I have, I've never seen this stone before, and by that I mean I've never built with this stone before, what is it? It is... Granite. Yes, I've never built with granite before, and for the first time ever, I'm going to be able to do stuff with granite, so it's going to be kind of cool, I think, being able to use new resources to build with. Obviously, there are the uh, water, underwater fortresses, which I've never messed with, but I'll be able to do stuff with that, um, and that actually brings me to, I want to build a guardian spawner sometime in the future as an XP farm because I have a really good idea for one of those. Hopefully that hasn't been done yet, but uh, we'll see about that. And yeah, there are just so many different things that I want to try out here in the world of Minecraft now that there are so many new features that I've never played with before. And yep, so we got some iron. That's good. How much should we grab? Eight? Ah, that's enough to build a pickaxe and that's about all that matters. Uh, I mean, I am wearing some iron pants that I found off of the, uh, I stole from somebody. Uh, oh, I hear a skeleton. You want to go, skeleton? I'll punch your face in. I will punch you. I will punch your face in the face with a sword. Yeah, that's what I thought. Don't don't you come after me. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> so many things I want to do. We'll see exactly how things are going to unfold as... Oh, no, give me my shears back. Uh, we'll see exactly how things are going to unfold as time progresses. Obviously, uh... Minecraft is going to evolve more and more, and hopefully in the future we'll have something really cool that is in this world. So, I think actually on that note, I'm going to end things off here, guys. So, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a like. That'll always help out quite a bit. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing your guys' feedback on what you think about the series, and if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see, obviously, go ahead and leave those in the comments, because, well, I am not the most creative of people. So if you guys want to help me be slightly more creative or if you want to see me do something, just leave me a note in the comments and I'll be sure to check that out. So guys, that's going to be all for now. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all again next time. So until then, farewell.